morning children how are you all i hope you are taking good care of your health right children please follow the monsoon precautions will you follow okay welcome to science class okay so we are discussing about growing plants okay children in part 1 we discussed about germination of seed okay structure of a seed and stages of germination right in part 2 we discussed about new plants from roots okay new plants from seeds okay and new plants from the stems okay so in that topic we discussed about runners layering and stem cutting children still one more is there to discuss that is grafting children in some plants such as mango apple and rose a portion of the shoot cut and attached to the another shoot of a plant okay so this method is called grafting okay now i'll show you one picture children children is it visible to you okay the portion of the shoot cut is called scion okay this cut portion is attached to the another shoot of a plant okay so this part is called stalk okay so here preparation of scion and preparation of stalk okay children this is called graft union okay children in grafting okay we used to join two parts okay we used to join two parts so that they appear to grow only one plant okay here in grafting the upper part of a one plant grows on root system of another plant okay so this method is called grafting okay this grafting method is used for get good quality of fruits okay am i clear children children now we learn about new plants from leaves okay new plants from leaves okay children new plants grow from leaves okay uh, children this is a bryophyllum plant okay children uh, you know new plantlets grow from the well developed leaves you know new plantlets grow from the leaves okay well developed leaves okay so these are small plants okay and when these grow into well okay new plantlets grow from the leaves okay children so while these leaves are attached to the branch okay when plantlets develop okay they fall off themselves okay and grow into a new plant so which plant is this very good bryophyllum okay so bryophyllum plant grow from the leaves okay children i plant a leaf in our school garden okay when you back to school we'll see in the ground okay now new plants from the spores in some plants such as ferns and mosses grow from 
special structures are called spores. Okay, they are very light and tiny. Okay, I'll show picture children. Look at here. In some plants such as ferns, okay, and mosses, new plants grow from the special structures. Okay, so these are the special structures. These are also called spores. Okay, these are very light and tiny structures. Okay, so they can survive for long period of time in unfavorable conditions. Okay, so in favorable conditions, they grow into a new plant. Okay, am I clear, children? Children, now we learn about dispersal of seeds. Dispersal of seeds. Children, if seeds are sown very close to each other, what will happen? Very good. They will struggle for space. Very good. Water. Very good. Nutrients. Right? And space. Sorry. Space, water, nutrients and light. If plant grow into well, the plant needs water, nutrients and light. Right? So, therefore, it is necessary that the seeds are scattered far away from each other. Okay? Here, <coughs> if seeds are close to each other, okay, they will struggle for space, water, nutrients and light. Therefore, it is necessary that the seeds are scattered far away from each other. Okay? So, the process in which seeds are scattered far away from the mother plant to obtain suitable conditions for germination is called dispersal of seeds. Once again, children, the process in which seeds are scattered to far away from the mother plant to obtain suitable conditions for germination is called dispersal of seeds. Okay? Children, here seed dispersal is carried out in the nature by wind, okay, water and animals. Okay? Seed dispersal carried out in the nature by wind, water and animals. Okay? These are also called dispersal of agents. Okay? So what we call this? Agents of dispersal. Now we learn about dispersal by wind. Dispersal by wind. Children, some fruits have very light hairy and wing shape of seeds. Okay, so that get caught in the wind are easily blown away from the parent plant. Okay, so here some fruits have very light, hairy and wing shaped seeds that get caught in the wind. Okay, and are easily blown away from 
to far off places where they can germinate. For example, cotton, maple, okay, and dandelion. So these are the examples of dispersal by wind. Am I clear children? Now we learn about dispersal by water. Okay? Children, I'll show you cotton seeds. Okay? These cotton seeds have hair-like structures. See? The cotton seed is covered with hair-like structures. Okay? So, the cotton seeds easily blown away from mother plant. Okay? So, look at here. Okay, so cotton seeds are easily blown away to far off places where they can germinate. Okay, now we learn about dispersal by water. Children, some fruits have waterproof covering and so light okay that they can float on water and are easily carried to far off places where they can germinate for example coconut and water lily are the examples of dispersal by water okay look at here children Children, uh, coconut has heavy seed inside it, okay, but is still able to float on water because coconut seed covered with spongy layers of fiber filled with air, okay. That is the reason coconut can able to float on water. Am I right children? Okay. This person. by animals okay children some seeds have hook like structures okay that help them to cling onto animal fur for example cocoa bur okay and some seeds have sticky substance that stick to the animal's skin okay and many birds eat fruits along with their seeds okay and those seeds passed out of their bodies along with undigested food okay and in suitable conditions those seeds grow into a new plant for example cocoa okay and what is the next one very good berries Okay, many birds eat fruits. Okay, blackberries, berries. Okay, so these are the examples of dispersal by animals. Am I clear, children? Now we learn about dispersal by explosion. Dispersal by explosion. Children, some seeds are covered with a leathery covering. And some of have pores inside. Okay. Some are covered with leathery covering and some are found inside pores which split open okay and when exposed to the sun or when it dries or even touch okay so this uh, i'll show you look at here children is it visible to you okay when pores brushed open the seeds are scattered from the mother plant okay so these seeds are scattered to far out places from the mother plant 
and in suitable conditions they grow into new plant am i clear children so here um dispersal of seeds we learned that dispersal by wind okay dispersal by water right and dispersal by animals and dispersal by explosion so these are are also called agents of dispersal okay children now let us watch one vi video first in the formation of fruits and seeds enclosed in them the seeds are the structures containing the embryo within now all that's required is proper rooting of the seeds in the soil this will result in germination and thus growth of a new plant but now the question arises how are these seeds fixed in the soil do they always get rooted near the parent plant from where they arise or sometimes at distances as well seeds can be dispersed to nearby or distant places as well all thanks to the process of seed dispersal the process by which seeds are dispersed to distant places by various agents is known as dispersal of seeds who are these agents seeds are transferred to various places by factors such as the wind water explosion and animals these agents make the process of dispersal of seeds easier let's now discuss about this process in detail our first agent of dispersal is the wind seeds of plants like dandelions have parachute like or hair like structures attached that are so light in weight that they easily get carried away by the wind does even the seeds get carried to distant places what is the next agent we have in our list it's water fruits which float such as those of the lotus and coconut palm are carried by water you won't believe that coconuts can travel for thousands of kilometers across seas and oceans hard to believe but they do what is the next type of dispersal let me name it for you it's called the dispersal by explosion did i just say explosion you heard me right then what exactly explodes in a plant in some cases fruits or pods containing seeds burst on their own the pods dry and split open suddenly with considerable force which throws the seed at a distance what are the examples of such type we have plants like broom and peas which belong to this category now these were all the abiotic agents last in the list are the biotic agents which we need to have a look at biotic means living organisms so are animals also responsible for dispersal of seeds yes they are tell me one thing what do we do with the seeds after eating juicy fruits we generally throw away the seeds right yes that is how seeds from a plant growing in one area reach a completely different area plants are even benefited with the seed dispersal by animals to understand this let's take the simple example of birds birds also relish on the juicy fruits that have seeds within in many cases the seeds of the plants are too tough to germinate if planted directly into the soil now if such a fruit is consumed by a bird then the seed does not get digested in the bird's body and is thrown away directly however the hard seed cover softens a bit due to the chemical activity of the acids present in the bird's stomach so as the seed passes through the bird's gut it gets soft and when it drops on the ground and gets rooted it becomes easy for the seed to germinate this is how animals can help in far and wide dispersal of seeds can you name some seeds which belong to this category blackberry cherry apple and so many pulpy fruits have seeds that are dispersed by animals now tell me why do we need this dispersal process i mean what will happen if the seeds from the parent plant get planted near it being near the parent plant would severely affect the growth and development of both the plants and why so the two will start competing for sunlight and water that is the reason why seed dispersal is extremely useful for plants children now we learn about agriculture okay children 
a plant grow in numbers on a flat of land in a particular season is called a crop okay children cultivation of crops on a large scale in fields is called agriculture children please note down the definition of agriculture okay cultivation of crops on a large scale in fields is called agriculture okay there are various processes involved in the agriculture let us learn one by one shall we okay have you noted fine first process preparing the soil okay what is the first process yes preparing the soil children farmers prepare the soil by ploughing the field okay children farmers use bullocks or tractors to plough their field okay the, what they used very good bullocks or tractors okay to plough their field okay so here ploughing turns the soil loose okay and the next process sowing healthy good quality seeds children before going to sowing seeds we must choose healthy and good quality seeds then farmers get good crops okay children in part 1 i told you that all seeds cannot grow into a new plant okay while some seeds are weak okay so such kind of seeds cannot grow into a new plant okay so before going to sowing seeds we must choose healthy good quality of seeds okay next third process irrigation children watering the land regularly for the crops to grow well is called irrigation okay simply we can say that watering the plants in the field is called irrigation okay next fourth one protecting the land from weeds and pests okay children weeds means unwanted plants grow among the crops okay and coming to pests means insects so insects harm the crop insects harm the crops okay so here this is done by spraying chemicals is called sorry weedicides 
and pesticides. Okay, this is done by spraying chemicals is called weedicides and pesticides. Okay, pests means insects and weeds means unwanted plants grow among the crops. The next process is harvesting. Children, the fully grown crops cut or collected for use. This process is called harvesting. Okay. The next process is storing. Children, uh, I'll tell you one thing. Harvesting can be done by manually or with the help of machines are called harvesters. Okay. Once again I am saying harvesting can be done by manually or with the help of machines are called harvesters. Okay. Now story. Children harvested crops should store in dry and well ventilated places. Okay. Now tell me children if we store Harvested crops in wet places, what will happen? Very good. Those seeds grow into a new plant, right? And insects spoil. Okay? So, we have to store the harvested crops in well ventilated places and dry places. Free from germs. Okay? Children, uh, now I will tell you types of crops. Okay? Farmers grow different crops based on the climate and season in which the crop grow. Okay. So based on the time of the year and suitable conditions. Okay. So the crops are of two types. Crops are of two types. They are Karif crops and Rabi crops. Okay, children, Karif crops usually beginning in June and harvested in September to October. Okay, children, Karif crops grow in rainy season okay karif crops need much water for growth okay and paddy cotton and sunflower millet are the examples of karif crops. Okay. Children once again karif crops usually beginning in the month of June and harvested in the month of September to October. These crops grow in rainy season. Okay. So karif crops need much water for growth. Okay. Paddy, cotton, sunflower, millet are the examples of karif crops. Am I clear? Now we learn about Ravi crops. Okay. Ravi crops started in November and harvested in April. Okay. Actually, the Ravi crops started in November and harvested in April. These crops grow in winter season. Okay. Children, rabi crops do not require much water for growth. Okay. Here, yeah. pea, wheat, okay, and 
cauliflower are the examples of rabi crops am i clear children so in this topic we learn about agriculture types of crops and dispersal of seeds right i hope you understood this topic thank you have a nice day